to the animations or cartoons, they uh, lack foundation, uh, distort re the reality, and are incomplete. So animation number five is received for demonstrative purposes only to help this witness uh, explain his testimony. Thank you, Your Honor. So, Dr. Schur, I'm going to let you take the reins here and use it as you need to explain. Okay. Thank you. Is that all right? Uh, can we... oh, Your Honor, we also object to the extent that this witness hasn't testified to any of the placement of any of the other skiers or, or bodies in this animation. Mr. Egan, uh, is that relevant to this witness's testimony, the other skiers? No, he's going to talk about the collision itself. So you should ignore any of the other skiers that are shown in the animation? Okay, so you can reverse it, Dr. Schur, to just uh, before the collision, so you can, we can focus on that and explain what you mean um, to show by this animation. Maybe I can't. How do you... You could press play again and it will get to it. Oh, here we go. Okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. So take us through, um, if you would, Dr. Schur, what uh, um, this animation shows from your point of view as a biomechanics expert. Sure. Um, the first thing that you should be aware of is that this is Miss Paltrow's version of the events. So, Doctor Sure, sorry to interrupt you. Oh, just maybe pull your mic. Sorry, yeah, sorry about that. Um, the, the first thing to be aware of is um, this is Miss Paltrow's uh, version of the events. So that's what we're showing here. And um, as we move forward, I'll talk about the physics, kind of like. What I drew earlier with the center of mass and the rotation, and that's the idea, that's what went into this. But again, this is not exactly what happened. This is just one of the possible ways it could have happened. So um, we have Miss Paltrow in black, Mr. Sanderson in the blue as uh, they move forward in time. Uh, it's uh, her testimony that his skis slid between hers. Mm -hmm. There we go. Uh, she felt a contact directly in the back, along her back. It sounded like her buttocks as well. Um, it, the person was grunting, um, pressing against her, but they were on their skis for a period of time. If in this situation, he's also moving to skiers right, which is in the left in this image. That will create, remember I had the force that was offset from the center of mass. That's going to create a rightward motion for her, but also create some initial rotation. Now, in, in this portion, there's a number of possibilities. She could be adding weight to her right ski because of the contact from Mr. Sanderson. Um, when you ski, if you're in, let's just take a snowplow or what my kids call pizza position. If you weight the right ski, you turn left. So if she weights the, the right ski here more because of the contact, she's going to turn counterclockwise. The contact from Mr. Sanderson, if it's more to the right, will turn her counterclockwise. So as they're moving to the right here, there would be some counterclockwise rotation. And here, her ski can catch, or she could pitch to the side, or they could both pitch to the side, they could both lose balance. We're not sure what happens, but as they're rotating, they're continuing to fall, and Miss Sanderson, uh, Miss, Miss Paltrow's version has them spooning, uh, essentially, as they're coming down together, which would make sense if their legs got caught up. If he was contacting her below her center of mass, where his right leg was contacting her right leg, her uh, thigh in that area. Also consistent with Miss Paltrow saying that her knee, her right knee was splayed open at the end and she felt right knee discomfort. That, that all could happen there. So as she's rotating and he's rotating counterclockwise, they fall to the side. Now, at this point here in the animation, I guess maybe the next frame, if I can do it.
Mr. Sanderson lands on his right side, or maybe the right back. Um, it's hard hard to say. If he lands on his right side, kind of like Dr. Bam said, you know, he needs to land on the elbow, that can happen. That can create lateral rib fractures. But that's not the only way. His arm could be out, he could land on the side and create lateral rib fractures. He could land on his side and a little bit towards the back and Miss Paltrow could land on him. She could be fully on him, maybe um, with her, her buttocks or her back or some portion of her mass compresses his chest front to back and that can create his rib fractures. There's a lot of different ways this could happen. I can't tell which one of those is right, but all of those are consistent with her version of the events. As they hit the snow, they would continue to move forward until friction slows them down. And uh, it's also important to note, we haven't talked about the head injury, but hitting the back of the head or the side of the head, he could have his head turned. All of those are possibilities for him to contact his head on the snow. So that's not inconsistent as well. Would it be helpful to show it in real time? You've been doing it kind of slow motion, which has sure. been also been very helpful. Maybe maybe start from the beginning and just play it. Objection lacks foundation for trajectory, speed, and direction. Overruled. It's a demonstrative of this witness's testimony only. All right. Thank you. Okay. This and, is sorry. Yeah. Go ahead, Doctor. This is from the the beginning. And if there's anything you want to comment on as it happens, feel free. I think that accurately reflects the version that Miss Paltrow testified to that matches the laws of physics and biomechanics as I understand them. And would it be helpful to show, there's one other animation that has a little zoom in from the other angle, would that also be helpful? I think, it, yeah, it can't okay. hurt. Let's show that then. Permission to approach, Your Honor, for that. Okay. What's the number of this animation? This will be number four. It's called Zoomed Inside. Who was the last one, James? Five. Number five. Oh, sorry. Okay. Wait just a sec. Okay, Dr. Schur, so I'm playing you number four, the zoomed in from the side version. Were you a part of creating this version as well? Yes, this is the same animation but from a different camera view. Got it. And Will this animation also help you explain the same things you've been going over it, with the jury? It's the same thing, sure. Yeah, I, I think it also visualizes, it, it illustrates my opinion. Okay. Your Honor, permission to show this uh, animation? Same Subject to the same objections by the plaintiffs, the animation for zoomed inside is received for demonstrative purposes only. Okay, thank you, Your Honor. So. Dr. Scherer, maybe since we've already gone through this, this slow motion, let's just play this one from the start, and then you can add anything that you can provide to the jury from this angle. Sure. Here, let's play first, and then there we go. Um, I'll wait until the contact point. So it's coming up. Here we go. There's contact fall to the right. This one doesn't show the rotation quite as much, and we don't know the amount of counterclockwise rotation as well. There could be a little, there could be more or less, Right. we're not sure. But if you, if you go backwards a little bit uh, in, into the moment of the collision, this one maybe shows, uh, does this one show the skis coming between the skis? Yes, it does. And I think it's better visualized in this one. Yeah, and, and again, uh, what's the significance of that in terms of how the mechanism of the fall occurs? Well, um, that's Miss Paltrow's testimony, and it works for the physics of them falling and rotating slightly counterclockwise. Um, frankly, if 
it wasn't both skis, if it was one ski between hers, the kinematics would be the same. For example, if his right ski were 